Hey friends, Kevin here, and today I'm bringing you that video I threatened, I mean promised, about giving you the lived-in tour after weeks on the road of being in this large van that I have. Because I don't want to show you things all perfect sitting in the driveway. I want to show you what it's really going to be like on the road for those of you just starting out. Some of you hopefully will get some good ideals of the way you may want to do something in your van. And some of you may actually have some suggestions from me about what I should do and how I should move things around in mine. And I am more than open to that. So feel free to always put stuff like that down in the comment section. Because I get some good ideals from you gals and guys sometimes. One thing, you may hear some thumps and some sounds which sound like explosions outside. And that actually what it is, it is that you're hearing, I am near an army base where artillery is going off and there is some practice going on. And there's actually an area here that they shoot artillery back and forth over the road from one side to another. So it's a real interesting area. But because it's so windy outside today, this seemed like a good day to do this inside tour so let's get to it. This is a basic view. This is the view I have if I'm sitting in here at night because the passenger seat is turned around backwards. It does swivel. So this is my view. I tend to have my feet up here. If I have someone with me, they tend to either be over in this seat or they may be back there in the bedroom area sitting on the bed. But this is... This is my normal view when I'm in here. Flip side of that, if I or someone else is back here in the bedroom area, this is the view looking toward the front. You can see the passenger seat there turn around backwards, which unless someone is with me while driving down the road because it has to be turned around correctly to use the seat belt, otherwise, to open things up, I always have that seat turned around backwards. And this van does have curtains and things that go over the entire windshield. But let's get into some step-by-step. -step. Now this van is tall enough I can stand up in the center section because these road trek conversion vans, what happened is they actually dropped the center of the floor four inches in addition to what they did with the high top. And that allows a little bit of head space. Now, this is good for somebody up to about six feet tall, and that is, that is all you're going to have. So if you're six foot six, you're still going to be bent over in here a little bit. But having a larger van, it is one of the niceties when you end up in really crap weather or just in the middle of the night that you can do have a place to actually get out and stand up without having to get out of the van. The minivan that I travel in a lot, obviously that's a different story. There is no way to stand up in it. But I function just fine in it, and I've been out in it for longer than 30 days at a time. Actually, two of us have been in it for 30 days at a time and go coast to coast in that thing. So it's all a matter of using what you have, whatever you happen to have, to your advantage. Now in this van, I have this little area here that will slide open. There's just cables and things that I use for cameras and stuff basically stuck in that little area. In these side pockets, it's nice that this actually has a place long enough. You could actually put fishing poles in here if you needed to. I have tried paper towel holder mounts in different places, and I have just decided it's just as easy for me to lay, lay this up here, and it's good enough. I carry a squeegee because you run into places and gas stations that don't have them, or the ones they have are just garbage, and... I carry one of these in each van that I have just so I can clean the windows myself when I need to. Because again, especially going into the west, you're just going to run into a lot of dusty areas. And here you can see one of my little devices. There's a fire alarm up here. 
There's various little books stuck in here. One on the Lincoln Highway. You can see an easy 66 guide. I have several 66 books in here. A Lee Iacocca book. Book on natural wonders of the world, which includes a lot of things. About half of the things in there are things in the United States. Coming around here to the other side. It's just basic things. I want a flashlight I can put my hand on real quick. I have a water filter if I need it. I have a really long 12-volt extension cord. This will allow me to get from the front of the van to the back of the van if I have to or be able to plug into the front or the back and be able to get outside and reach the wheels if I need to be able to inflate tires, things like that. So it comes in handy. I'll link some of these things down in the description if you want to go and check out the current prices on them can of disinfectant some gloves i don't have any type of vacuum cleaner in this van i have a simple little broom and dust pan that does well enough i have a rug i can take outside and shake out the broom and dust pan will do everything else never hurts to have a magnifying glass to be able to read things, especially as some of you people get older. I have a little bear from Canada, a Route 66 hat. I think there's an Oatman hat on the other side. You always want to have a couple of hats. It just, between weather and wind and sun, it never hurts to have a couple of caps. Something handy to throw on your head. And my new fire extinguisher, in case you saw the video where the old fire extinguisher was basically complete junk and when I tested it, did not function at all. So I'm going to remind again, as a safety reminder, if you have a van that's more than about 10 years old that you have bought that came with a fire extinguisher, it is probably worthless and you need to toss it and buy a new one. And I'll link this down below also. And then these are just things that show the road trek because this does have tanks, fresh holding and gray tank. Shows the battery level, which is completely full. And there's a button there for the water pump, and there's a button there. This actually has a built-in water heater. Seldom is that used, but it is, does come in handy. You can see the overhead fan, one of the lights. You will notice my air conditioner. This is a built-in house air conditioner. No, this will not run off solar. Yes, this will run plugged in to shore power. Yes, this will run on a generator. But if you notice, the cover is completely gone. It's because this is the original from 1993, and this plastic cover just basically completely disintegrated. <laughs> it, it just, every time I touched it, it seemed like another piece would break off of it, or I would take it off to, to clean and go to put it back on, and another piece would break off. So I took pictures of it so I would remember what it looked like if I ever get somewhere and find crashed one of these in a junkyard that hopefully I can I can get the cover out of but don't really need the cover doesn't serve any real purpose and you can see brilliantly we wrote what the things do right here so we're covered sometimes you just have to make do with what you have and you have to come up with a solution for something that breaks the bedroom section this is not quite a queen size bed. I would think of it as closer to being a, a full size bed. Up in this cabinet, and there's one on each side like this that run back in behind this air conditioner. This is basically clothes. You'll see a few CDs stuck in there, but it's basically socks and shirts and underwear. This side over here 
gets used for some food storage. You can see all kinds of delicious cereals, pancake mix, all of that good stuff. A hamburger helper. I'm traveling with someone who brought a small duffel bag, which is what's hidden under that particular blanket. That duffel bag is about big enough to stuff a human body into. It's a little too much, but so be it. My little kitchen section sink. I'll just throw all of this stuff in here when I'm driving so I don't have to worry about it bouncing around. Two burner stove. I have this little basket Velcroed down and I left enough space right here to put a coffee pot. Helpful tip, buy a decent can opener. Do not run through a store and buy the 98 cent at Walmart or the Dollar General store can opener because I guarantee after a few uses, it's just going to fall apart in your hands. And you will be out in the middle of nowhere when it happens, and then you will not be able to open a can of whatever. Ask me how I know this. Food takes up a lot of space. You can see some tuna in there, some different other cans. There's This goes back in here about three layers deep. And by the way, if you end up with one of these road treks and you put anything in here, it will slide up against the hinge and you won't be able to get it open. Don't force it. Stick your hand up in there and push the can or whatever's back that's catching it and then you will be able to open it. Another section up here, plastic spoons, forks, crackers, chips. Peanut butter is an absolute necessity. I buy a can of these every once in a while just to remind myself I hate them. Some croutons, some different little dinners. And then down here we have a trash bag. It's the best place I have to put a trash bag. This thing has a little trash bin built into it but it is so small to me as to be absolutely worthless. So I use the trash bin to store trash bags. I also prefer a hanging trash bag because something like this makes it too easy if you do end up with an ant in your vehicle to get into. So I prefer the trash hanging there and where I can get rid of it easier. And in here and here you will see more stuff. You will see my little personal blender that I carry. My luxury item in here being a toaster. I carry basically one pan. There may be two pans in there. One pot. One spatula. That is pretty much it for cooking utensils. You only have a two burner stove. You don't need six pots and pans. Now, this particular rig has this built-in refrigerator. However, if you've watched some of my stuff before, you know I have this big refrigerator right there, this 12-volt compressor refrigerator, 65 quarts. It works flawlessly and the temperature stays exactly where it is supposed to 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. These built-in ones are hit and miss. They can go, you can switch them from full hookup to running off 12 volt and some, including this one, will even run off of propane. However, when you get into extreme hot temperatures, they have trouble cooling down a lot. When you fill them up with a lot of food at one time, they have trouble cooling down fast enough a lot. So, another thing, you almost have to always be parked dead level or these things can simply quit working and you won't realize it. And in all these situations, you will wake up the next day and find out that your food has spoiled. So I eliminated all of those issues 
by putting this large 12 volt fridge in here. So this built in one I could have gotten rid of, but I just use it for more food storage. Perfect spot there for some coffee cups. Perfect space there for my little coffee maker. Some more stuff in the little freezer section. So you've probably caught on to the fact that a whole lot of this space is devoted to food. Because if you're going to be out in more deserted areas, you're going to have to have enough food and enough water and enough of those types of things, whatever you enjoy, to get by. Because if you have any little stores nearby, you're going to pay a fortune for whatever they do happen to have. So you want to be as stocked up as you can with this stuff. And in addition to this, I have another little crate under the bed here that has some more canned stuff in it. So a large portion of the space that I have in this van is devoted to food. And then some's going to be devoted to even more water and drinks, which I'm going to show you now. Because coming into this section, we have our built-in toilet. We have all this wasted space above it, but you have to be able to sit somewhere on the toilet. We have a place to hang a few clothes. You'll see a case of water and some Coca-Colas in there. I have a built-in shower system, but I also have this little pump-up shower that I use in the minivan. I will throw in here sometimes and have it as a backup. Then on this top shelf are going to be a lot of towels and toiletries. And a giant first aid kit, obviously the Red Cross. So in another video, I'm going to show you all of the goodies that we carry and why for a first aid kit. And what I recommend that other people carry also, especially if they're going to be camped a little further out on their own. One magical roll of toilet paper. Do I have anything else? You have to have swim trunks, folks, and or a bikini. Have to, have to. You never know what you may run into. You may want to wait around in the water at a lake, or you may even run into a hot spring somewhere if you're traveling in the west, so you always want to be prepared. That is the basic layout of this and this is going to be pretty similar to what anyone is going to do even if it's not a road trek if they're starting out and they're converting a cargo van into a camper van to use for van life and if you have a minivan a little bit less space than this and if you follow this channel you know that i also have a minivan and i'm getting ready to redo and do a new build on it you're going to see that stuff coming up soon as soon as I'm finished with the current trip that I'm on. As far as a couple of things I've thought about doing different, I'd like to mount that paper towel holder somewhere, but I just don't have a good place, so I've about decided it's convenient enough right there. Room to set up in bed. I've thought about adding some kind of little net, and I probably will over here just to be able to some kind of little net in one of the corners just to be able to stick a couple of pair of shoes or something. This has this giant fluorescent old-fashioned light built in that it used to have a cover until the first day I had this van working on it. This bed folds up and will actually make a kitchen table if that's what you want it to do. I just leave it as a bed all the time now. But I jumped in through the back door and managed to bash my head in on the cover for this. And the cover of this is now in many, many pieces in a dumpster somewhere. So I'm going to replace this with just a flat little 
LED light. But I don't have that many real changes planned for in here. It pretty much functions. The cabinets built into it are, are nice for what they are. You can always wish you had more space. This does have a couple little drawers that open, earbuds, knives, some little electronic gizmos, a few more things for cooking. I'll keep my little water thing in there. I'll keep a couple connectors I need for different things in those drawers. The back of this actually has a nice compartment that opens up that I can drop things into that I need to deal with the water tanks, the sewer hoses, and that sort of thing. So with me leaving this all the time with this bed made up, because you the space on each side that would turn into a bench seat, there are all the electronics that run the van. There's a hot water tank under one side. There's a, a furnace, propane furnace under one side. So the only real space you have is just here in the middle. Going front to back anyway. And I do have... I do have a pull out here with a few tools that I need to get to, the common tools, and again, cans of food. Now, if you're the type of person or couple that eats out every day, and eats out every meal, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And you wouldn't need quite as much food. However, again, I do these warnings for people from the East because I'm one of those people from the East. And when you come West, you're just the first time, you're just not prepared. When you hit the center of the United States, you're not prepared for how desolate the places you are are going to run into happen to be and how few services there are going to be. And you're used to being going through towns in the east with a thousand people that have four convenience stores and three fast food restaurants. And it's just not like that in this part of the country. So you're going to have to be prepared and have what you want with you because you're not going to be running five miles down to the nearest Walmart. It may be 75 miles to the nearest Walmart. And you may get lucky and you may have some Dollar General stores around, which are great to restock at. But it is very possible when you get into the center of the United States I can guarantee you are going to hit places that it can be 40 miles to get to the nearest store. Any type of what you would even call a convenience store that would really have much of anything you would need, much less running into a dollar store or a family dollar to stock up. And that's, again, that's the part of the country I'm getting ready to play in a little bit. So... I'm covered as far as food, but it takes up a lot of space. But I would love to hear any of your suggestions with what you've seen in this setup of how I could do it better or how I could use this space a little more efficiently. And for those of you starting out, hopefully this will give you an idea of how and where to put things away and keep them out of the way. Because with a minivan... At least the way I do it, you know, one person, you're going to have a little bed. You're going to have a little bit of space on one side. A larger van, you can have this and you can have the little aisle to walk down the center if you do it right. But there's not a lot, a, a great deal of difference. There's not as much difference between this and a minivan as, as people would think they it would be. Storage becomes what it becomes. What you take with you becomes what it becomes. And there's just everything you drag into the van, you just are going to reach a point where it becomes no more. Anything else I buy that I'm standing in the store looking at, something else that I already own has to go. So is this thing I'm buying more valuable to me than whatever I'm going to have to get rid of? Because if you don't do that, you just are in a, a situation where you have too much stuff 
and all of your time gets spent moving stuff from one place to another. Every time you need something, it's buried under six other things that you have to move. And that will become aggravating really, really quickly, or at least it did to me. So I try to put these things now a little more of a challenge in the minivan than it is here, but just where I don't have to move six things to get to the one thing I need. Any questions you have, put those down in the comment section. Any comments you have, put those down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Again, I could do better. We'll talk soon.